Aorus is one of my favorite brands to review. I mean, Gigabyte Aorus. And I wanted to end this Z690 season with a bang and what probably is one of the best motherboard produced this year. Today, we are reviewing the one-of-a-kind Z690 Aorus Master, probably one of the greatest motherboard I have ever seen, which will satisfy all of your tech senses from the moment you hold that sturdy black thing till the moment you turn it on. So ours is Gigabyte's um, gaming lineup of motherboard and the master one of its higher top tier. It, it's all about premium tech. And, and let me tell you right away, this is a superlative on its own right, as I like to say. And ours made a point uh, when producing this motherboard to be so unique, it could not be easily compared. It has all the bell and whistles you'll find in the most expensive motherboards out there. And yes, if you haven't noticed yet, I really, really liked it. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with an 8-layered ATX PCB, which is a little more than we used to have, but obviously perfect to properly isolate PCIe 4 and PCIe 5 signaling, but no less importantly, it does provide a greater VRM diffusion and a better sound isolation as well. Definitely a big premium feature on this board, especially when you know that adding a couple more layers does cost quite a bit of money to the manufacturers, but it definitely is also the hallmark of a robust and long-lasting motherboard. In addition, and as we see in top-tier powerful motherboards, we do have a massive backplate, which has the advantage of both protecting the board back circuit from indelicate builders, truly yours, but also provides additional cooling to the VRM by providing its solder points with thick one millimeter thermopads. Design-wise, the master shows off a rather complex industrial look with sanded surfaces. It is intricated, recycles the well-known hours branding whilst remaining harmonious. I especially like the looks of the VRM fins, which gives this heavy industrial feel to the board and underline its overall premium. I really, really like it. Now, RGB-wise, Aorus being Aorus, it is right in your face, starting with a rather bright RGB under the IO roof and another one nested right under the chipset heat shield. Now, if that was not enough, we also have four RGB connectors, two of which are addressable, all deliciously customizable through Gigabyte's very own Fusion software. In short, enough RGB to make your electrical bill proud. CPU socket-wise, we got our usual LGA 1700 CPU socket, able to support both 12th and 13th generation of Intel Core processors. New CPU generations, which do introduce both DDR5 RAM support and the new PCIe 5.0 standard, which will be particularly beneficial to content and media creators and obviously was one of the many focus of these boards. Now, most importantly, VRM-wise, the Z690 Aorus Master features a behemoth 2,225 amps organized in a 3 plus 19 direct phases, 2,000 amps of which are CPU-centric. A first, as far as I'm concerned, and I really thought this was a marketing stunt in the beginning, but after playing with this oversized, overpowered VRM, I realized there were real benefits. First, we're dealing with a very quick and extremely stable VRM with a very short transient response, which ensures stability whilst exploring your CPU higher clock's limits. And that is truly an identifiable obsession uh, Gigabyte had with this motherboard. Because if these VRM specs impressed you, wait for the cooling components because they are Quite simply, the very best ones I have ever reviewed in a decade of motherboard reviewing. That is a long time. We got these two stages, heat pipe linked, gorgeous Finari blocks, which are a marvel of manufacturing. The side block comes with a heavy thick plate mounted by dozens of radiating Finari. And the main block is, well, intense in lack of better words. We have a thick white plate pushing six deep winglets on its back for heat storage and propagation. So all mounted by a two-leveled Finare radiator, which is not only excellent in terms of efficiency, but looks so 
absolutely gorgeous. And one of my biggest regrets on this motherboard is the presence of this VRM IO cover, which is not only useless in terms of cooling, but hides that beautiful work of precision and manufacturing. In addition, the VRM blocks are equipped with a double contact design and which offers a direct thermopadded contact to boost chokes and power stages for a much faster heat transition. And obviously, temps results are unsurprisingly exemplary. With a severely overclocked i7-12700K running at a stable 5.1 GHz, the side blocks always remain below 50 degrees Celsius. And as far as the main block goes, it never went beyond 45 degrees Celsius. And given the size of this VRM, this is a gorgeous result if results could be gorgeous. And needless to say, this motherboard can run and operate any kind of processors, but anything lower than an i7 would be an insult. Memory-wise, the Z690 Hours Master supports up to 128GB of DDR5 RAM in a dual-channel configuration, overclockable up to a very fast 6.4GHz. Obviously, a big incentive upgrade when you come from, well, anything who's not running DDR5 memory. I mean, it fares exceptionally well in memory-intensive tasks as used in production environment and can provide up to 50% more bandwidth than its DDR4 counterpart. And gaming-wise, the difference is not as visible, so don't expect gaming wonders just based on, on the fact that there, this thing supports DDR5 memory. Staying in the memory, RZ 690 Hours Master supports up to five M.2 solid state drives, four of which are PCIe 4 enabled. That's four sticks able to swap data up to 64 gigabit per second each. An obscene amount of storage bandwidth, which will allow you an unprecedented level of data access, especially true when you know that your sticks can be configured in a zero, one or five red configuration. But obviously, and as usual, your M.2 solid set drive sticks will get really hot really quickly. Thankfully, Gigabyte really went all out on the cooling solutions of our M.2 solid set drives. Not only do we have a double side thermal padded solution for all of our sticks, but we also have this large, thick, beautifully finished thermo shields, which will keep these M.2 solid state drives as cool as they can be. But I want us to have a special um, consideration for this individual lonely M.2 solid state drive heat shield, which is absolutely gargantuous. I've never seen something like this. Not only is it super long, but look at how it towers above the motherboard. This thing is gigantic. And I know sticks can get hot, but not that hot. So it's probably more of a, of a stunt, right? Of a marketing stunt more than anything else. And that's probably five, ten dollars of steel, of alloy steel here that we didn't need to spend. So it looks great, it, it's, but it's absolutely not useful and, and your sticks will never need it. So yeah, next time maybe saving five bucks of our money would be a good idea, ours. Just saying, maybe. And, and the last little thing I'm going to say as usual, cause I get picky, is the fact that we do not have a screwless locking mechanism as we've seen both on MSI and ASUS. And I really, really hope that Gigabyte get that point for the next iteration of that motherboard. This little locking mechanism, it's actually very useful. And since we're here, let's quickly note the presence of our usual six SATA ports, able to swap data to that slow but reliable six gigabit per second. Great to operate your legacy drives. Now, chipset-wise, we got Intel's first PCIe 4 native supported chipset and soon to be replaced. It has more bandwidth, more lanes than its predecessor, but most noticeably, the Z690 chipset manages to deliver PCIe 4.0 standard bandwidth at a very cold 6 watts hit footprint, something that AMD did fail to do with the X570 motherboards lineups. And without any surprise, this is the blueprint which served uh, to create the Z790 chipset, which is coming next week, which, you know, uh, spoiler alert, 
brings nothing new, absolutely nothing new to this motherboard chipset. Now, PCIe expansion wise, we got three 16 slots PCIe exports with different number of lanes. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU has 16 PCIe lanes. Therefore, this is where you'd want your GPU for optimal performances hence the metallic reinforcement. In addition, and for the first time ever, it operates at PCIe 5.0 standard, meaning it can swap up to 64 gigabyte per second worth of data, dwarfing the two remaining 16 slots, which operates only four lanes at PCIe 3 standard, meaning four gigabytes per second only each. A single GPU motherboard, which I am totally fine with, especially in this age where, for one, uh, video cards, 3000, 4000 series NVIDIA video cards are so absolutely powerful, I don't see what you're gonna do with it, which will require a second video card. But it's also so freakishly expensive. I mean, I just released a video uh, talking about the RTX 1490 uh, starting at $1600 MSRP. But frankly, talking when you look around the net and the NVIDIA very own websites, it doesn't sell below $2000. So yeah, a uh, single video motherboard are fine. The only issue I have here is yet another marketing stunt that Aris tried here. If you look at the other two 16 slots, uh, they cannot support video cards. I mean, if you put a video card here, it will be bottlenecked by the very slow four gigabyte per second bandwidth. But still, Gigabyte decided to equip them with metallic reinforcements, which suggests the idea that they can uh, support video cards and give that uh, multiple premium GPU impression to the board. I find it a little bit dishonest. Uh, it's also spending some of our money for absolutely nothing again. And it's not the first time I'm saying this about our Gigabyte, which I love. But yeah, this is uh, something I would like to see disappear on the next iterations of those more premium motherboards. Now, last but not least, and as usual, I need to mention the fact that having a PCIe 5.0 enabled 16 slots is great as future proofing goes, but we have until today, no video cards able to output that level of bandwidth for at least, you know, four to six years. So great future proofing, but that's about it. Now, back IO wise, let me start by mentioning our padded back IO plates, always a plus, and starting from the left. We have a clear CMOS and flashback button, especially great for updating your BIOS without a CPU, a dual band Wi-Fi 6E adapter able to broadcast to the faster and cleaner six gigahertz radio spectrum, four USB third generation with five gigabit outputs, an upgraded HDMI port for our integrated graphics, seven USB 3.2 generation with 10 gigabit outputs each, including two type C's and an Aquentia 10 gigabit LAN, which screams premium and will be most important for production builds, which depends on high bandwidths for their nice drives. And finally, our eight channel ALC1220 VB codec from Realtek, which isn't the newest or the best codec ever, but is seconded by an excellent DAC chip, as well as the best audio capacitors in the industry, the Wima capacitors. When you see these little red cubes, you know you are going to have a great playback quality, as well as studio graded recording. Obviously, I wanna say almost a perfect feature-rich back I.O. Now, front panel connector-wise, we have a couple of second-generation USB connectors for your monitoring, two 5 gigabit front panel connectors, a 10 gigabit front panel Type-C, and a Thunderbolt 4.0 connector, great for a production build, but to be honest with you, totally expected at this price range. Cooling-wise, <laughs> <laughs> we got 10 deliciously hybrid connectors. Now talk about putting a little too much again. Seven would have been more than enough because all of those connectors are hybrid connectors, which can all support either PWM, um, water pumps or flow sensors individually. So great, amazing, but a bit too much. On the good side, it will provide a, a very high level of agility 
to uh, create and support one of the most intricate and complex cooling uh, systems you can imagine. But there is also one thing which made me smile on this board that I've never seen before is that we have a sound detector. Now, I'm not sure why that's here. I don't know. I mean, I, I should have Googled it right away. Said, oh, of course this is, but I wanted to keep myself in that uh, reviewer juice. You know, um, untarnished by the others, by the the interwebs. So yeah, uh, if you want to enlighten me, enlighten me on this, and, and use the comment section to turn me into uh, a ridiculous, stupid Frenchman, as I try not to be that often, please do. Now, troubleshooting wise, in addition of the two clear CMOS and flashback buttons we saw on the back IO, we do have a full solution here, starting with our usual easy debugger which will guide us through the main booting stage of our boot, a QR code screen to help refine our troubleshooting experience and identify the exact root of any failures, and three soldered buttons, including a fully customizable one. Now, you will not find that level of troubleshooting in many, many motherboards, and so that really is an added value for the master, for the Z690 Aorus master, and in your worst time in your build, this will simplify your life. And finally, BIOS-wise. As usual, Gigabytes provided us with a very clear, um, easy to read, rock stable BIOS. Um, if you've used any Gigabyte BIOS in the past decade or so, you will feel right at home. All the new options and upgrades have been incrementally added over the years, so I have no fear uh, for newcomers to right away know their way through all the menus and different sections of this BIOS. Now, this said, in conclusion, at 3 100 USD before taxes down from 470 bucks at launch. This board is an absolute steal and that's why I decided to review that thing even though we are a week away from the Z790 release. The Z690 Aros Master offers the best VRM I have ever seen with the best, most advanced passive cooling components. It's PCB layering and its backplate offer both a foundation which will make this board the last thing to give up in your build. And everything else around is a statement of excellence offering simply the very best features available on the market today and for some time. And just as comparison, 300 bucks is half the price of what the Strix Z790E will cost and it'll just do so much more than the Strix. Um, and it's important, especially in these days where all the prices on the tech world are just exploding as the rest of the prices everywhere. So uh, it's particularly important to be able to identify the right kind of components which will bring you the best of what technology can offer us today and, uh, and still at a reasonable price or an affordable price anyways. So basically, if you are in for any kind of build, uh, whether obscenely intensive gaming or just gorgeous production stuff, this is where your money wants and begs you to be.